chapter two review. So question number one, one plane blank passes through three non-collinear points. Is this always, sometimes, or never true? Anybody have a guess? A. It's A, always. We even had a postulate about that. A plane always passes through three non-collinear points. Okay? So if you have a plane, it passes through three non-collinear points. We also had a postulate. If you have three non-collinear points, then one, they are all on one plane. A line contains, a line blank contains at least two points. Always. A line always contains at least two points because one point is not a line. Harambe is so proud of you. <laughs> I don't know. They have a fascination with Harambe. Which of the following is an example of the transitive property? D. 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 If x is equal, x minus 3 is equal to y, and y is equal to negative 4, then x minus 3 is equal to negative 4. D. Yeah. D. And moving on. Oh, I thought it was moving on. It doesn't want to move on. I know. It's like my life. Okay, here's the thing. I'm going to go over here. Sometimes you got to move on in life. Okay, there we go. In the figure shown, angle A, E, D, so that's this angle here, is 124 degrees. Which of the following statements are false? So we want not True. So let's look. B, E, C, and C, E, D, they are adjacent angles. We want false. So since that's true, it's not A. A, E, B, and D, E, C are not supplementary, correct? Correct. Because they are vertical, which means they are congruent. Now, here's the only problem. What if A, E, B were 90 degrees. Then would AEB and DEC be supplementary? Yes. yes. Okay, so just be careful of that. AEB is 56 because 56 plus 124 is 180, correct? And BEC is 124 because it's vertical. So the correct answer here is B. Say peace out, period one. Peace out, period one. So oh, cool, look at that. See how it creates a shadow on the screen. That's kind of cool. Fun here with our review. So I'm going to try and like stand and record with this thing near my mouth. It's a microphone thing. It's broken up. Okay, DC is perpendicular to line N. Is that true or false? True. True. How do we know that? Because there's a right angle symbol. And a right angle means 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees, it's perpendicular. A, B, J, and D, C, H. Are they supplementary? Uh, right over there. Because I can't say names because we're videoing. Yes. Yes. Yes is what? True. Yes. Okay. They're both 90 degrees, and 90 plus 90 is 180. And supplementary angles measure 180 degrees. L bisects angle G, B, J. True or false? Okay, why did you say false? Okay. True. It's actually true. I think what you're doing, and I had this in first period also, is you're confusing bisecting an angle and bisecting a segment. Here we're talking about bisecting an angle. G, B, J is a straight angle. It's 180 degrees. So when this line comes through, it's creating, I wanted that in red, so you can see it better. It's creating a 90 degree angle. If this is a 90 degree angle, 
then the other side is a 90 degree angle. Bise a angle bisector means it cuts the angle in half. So it cuts the 180 degree angle into two 90 degree angles. Okay? True or false? The converse of a true conditional statement is always true. False. It's false. Why is it false? Oh, um, because it's like, it's, um, it's just flipping the hypothesis and the conclusion. So if you remember, we had four types of statements, a conditional, a converse, an inverse, and a contrapositive. And we learned that if the conditional is true, the contrapositive is true. The conditional is false, the contrapositive is false. And then the converse and the inverse have the same truth value. If I have a true conditional and a true converse, then all four statements are true, correct? And what is that called when all four statements are true? Biconditional, okay? Or it's a good definition. A biconditional statement is always a good definition because no matter how we move those, that hypothesis and that conclusion around, it's still true. The converse of a true conditional statement is never true. False. That is also false. As we see here, it could be false, but as we just discussed, if it's a biconditional, if it's definition, all of it is going to be true. So now, let's look at this proof. So, reason number one is what? Yeah. Give it. Reason number two, AB plus BD. So this whole amount here, correct? Is equal to DE plus BD. So the first thing I want to make sure you get, this is not segment addition postulate. Do you understand why it is not segment addition postulate? You want to explain to us? Um, sure. Do you want to try to speak into the microphone? Sure. We're going to move the microphone. Oh, oh, don't pull anything. We don't want to hurt anything. Okay, there you go. Explain into the broken microphone. Because you're adding A, B, and B, D. And it's equaling two other segments, so it's not um, addition, addition, or segment addition property. Okay. What is it? Addition property of equality. It is addition property of equality. You are actually, in this one, adding BD to both sides. So you can put APOE, addition property of equality. The next one is, yes? It is segment addition postulate. So it's now you are saying that this segment plus this segment equals this whole thing. This part of AB and this part of BD added together equal the larger segment AD. And then the same thing for DE and BD. And I should have had those in a different color. So DE and BD. So this is segment addition postulate. Now, for the win, what is reason number four? Yes. Uh, substitution property of equality. No. Now, he said substitution property of equality. Last week, I would have accepted that because I was more concerned that you not think it's like Subtraction property of equality. What is it? It is transitive property of equality. You cannot write just transitive property. You have to have the of equality, but you can put TPOE. Now, let me explain why. This AD. Oh, come on. Now the microphone is interfering with the board. So, this AD is equal to AD, correct? This BE 
is equal to this BE. Okay? And we've said up here AB plus BD is equal here, and DE plus BD is equal there. So it is, if this, it's one of those where we have a number of things equal to each other that's transitive property, okay? So if you got substitution, you're close, but how you want to, if it helps you, think of, oh, it must be transitive. There's lots of different things equal to each other. Substitution is more, we just take out one little piece of an equation and put in something else. Does that help you understand why it's transitive property? Yeah. Are there questions on this proof? Because then I'm going to stop the recording. Number 11, what is reason number one? Given. 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 To get from one to two, what are we doing? Okay, it's actually addition property, property of equality. That's fine. Okay, now. For this next one, we're saying the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to this large angle AFC. With the long hair, because I can't say your name in the video. Angle addition postulate. Okay. It is angle addition postulate. And we are actually doing this twice, but they've combined them into the same statement and reason. Because then we are saying that... Angle 2 and angle 3 add up to DFB. How are we getting from statement 3, or everything we've done so far, to statement 4? Transitive. Transitive. Now make sure you write. You have to write of equality. You can write it out, or I will accept TPOE. What do you notice about this proof? Compared with number 10. Transitive property equality is always the last one. Transitive property equality is the last one. What else do you notice? Between number 10. Between this and number 10. Number one is given. What do you notice about number two? Oh, they're all the same. They're, okay, guys, this is really the same proof. Number 10 is done with line segments, number 11 is done with angles. Okay? Notice that. Just say it. Intersecting lines are sometimes perpendicular. Yes. Twin number one. True, because they can form a 90 degree angle. Okay. True, because they can form a 90 degree angle, and they can not form a 90 degree angle. Correct? So that's what you want to write. It's true. They're sometimes perpendicular, because sometimes they can form a 90 degree angle, and sometimes not. Question or comment? <clears throat> Um, would you accept true could not or could not make a, a right angle? Yes. Could not make a right angle. Did you have a con question? Go, go to the next one. Okay, tell me what it is for the next one. Um, no politicians are reliable. Okay. I'm sorry, are you back to number 12? Yeah, wait, he said, because the answer was like that you can form a 90 degree angle. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Okay, does that help? So let's edit all that out. Let's start over. Okay. Number 12, is a statement true or false? Explain your reasoning. Twin number one, what'd you put? True can, because it could form a 90 degree angle. It could form a 90 degree angle, but over there it could. True could not make a right angle. Could not make a right angle. It could, it could not. You could put either one. If you really wanted to be safe, you could write both. Sometimes it would make a 90 degree angle, and sometimes it wouldn't. Okay, who wants to do number 13? Go ahead. No politicians are reliable. Okay, so no people who run for office are reliable. Politicians run for office, so no politicians are reliable. Would you take this, all politicians who run for office are not reliable? <laughs> well, all politicians run for office. So you want, you want to make that jump of your replacing this with that. Yes. What about politicians are unreliable? I will accept that. Oh my God. Okay. 
very impressed. Okay, coming along here, happy. Okay, now here is the really difficult one. If the dogs get out of the yard, the catcher will take them to the pound. Your dogs got out of the yard, what happened? <laughs> the catcher is taking the dog to the pound. The catcher will take the dog to the pound. Don't just put the dog will go to the pound. You need to put the catcher will take the dog to the pound. Question? What if you said they will, the catcher will take them to the pound? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Supplementary angles have measures with a sum of 180 degrees. Angle C and angle D are not supplementary. So what would you say? Angle C and angle D do not add up to 180 degrees. Perfect. Questions on those? No. That was the worst recording session ever. <laughs> So for number 16, if a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon. I have drawn a figure that is a polygon. Therefore, the figure I drew is a quadrilateral. Is that valid or invalid? Invalid because you could draw a triangle. Okay, perfect. It's invalid because you could draw a triangle. So where it says if it's valid, which law did you use? You didn't use a law of logic because it's invalid. Okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if it were, uh, like it would be lost, so if it, um, like if one of them. Okay, then you would have to, but I'm okay. telling you, it's not valid. No, no, but. But right, know. right. Like that's the right thing. Yes, law of syllogism or law of detachment. Okay. For number 17 and 18, I want to make sure you understand how, please put your hands down, because I need to go through this because I want to make sure you understand how I expect it answered, okay? You do not, for these, say, postulate 5 or postulate 7 or whatever, because different postulates will be numbered differently in different textbooks. You say, if, you write, if, and then what do you have a picture of? So what do I have a picture of here? A long line. Okay, so if you have a line, then it what? Contains at least two points. Okay, contains or it has at least two points. So that's what you're writing. If you have a line, then you have at least two points. So for number 18, if you have three non-collinear non points, then you have a, a, they're all on the same plane or then you have a plane. If the picture has the picture of the plane first and says if, then it would be if you have a plane, then it has three non-collinear points. So you want to write it in the order that it is drawn here. You listen up, don't miss it. You need to have the words if and then. The words are here to help remind you. But if you're going to forget, then you write yourself a note on your study guide to make sure you use the words if and then. Do we understand what's expected in number 17 and 18? Okay. Number 19 we already discussed is substitution. The reason this one is substitution is all we are doing here is taking out this D and inserting A. Everything else is changing, is, is, sorry, everything else is staying the same. Number 20 is transitive. transitive property, okay? And typically in a proof, as you're finding, a lot of times you are not sure it's transitive property because there's a lot of stuff going on. Substitution is really just one thing comes out and one thing goes in, okay? Are there questions on this page? <laughs>